Dear viewers, I'm Zahir Alam. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. Our today's guest is Mr. Chris Atkinson, President of Southeast Asia at Microsoft. Dear viewers, you know Microsoft is the largest contributor in the high-tech industry in the world, which founded in 1975. You know the chairman and the chief software architect of Microsoft is Bill Gates. Microsoft is the leader in software, services and solutions that help people and businesses realize their full potential. Mr. Chris Atkinson, President of Southeast Asia at Microsoft, leading the overall business strategy and development of one of the Microsoft fastest growing regions. Welcome, Mr. Chris Atkinson, on Frankly Speaking. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, Chris, uh, tell us about something about your purpose of your visit. Oh, the purpose of my visit. Um, uh, we opened a subsidiary here about two years ago, um, and uh, we really were excited about the potential uh, in the Bangladesh market. So uh, I just recently uh, took over as uh, president of Microsoft Southeast Asia, so I really wanted to take the opportunity uh, to come to Bangladesh. It's my first visit, so really it's an opportunity to meet the team and really to learn about Bangladesh, experience the people. I've had a great opportunity to meet with customers and partners, and I've really enjoyed my trip. It's just been a short trip this time, uh, but it will certainly not be my last. So what will be your uh, main thirst in terms of expansion of your business? Well, I think that uh, Microsoft's uh, uh, focus in Bangladesh is really about uh, th three things. Firstly, it's about delivering great business value to our customers. Uh, we've got a great range of products. Many people I know, I'm sure, are familiar with Windows and Office. It's about delivering uh, business value to our customers. But we believe that uh, information technology can really have a positive economic impact on Bangladesh. We think that Bangladesh is a, is a country with lots of young people. It has smart, skilled people and we think that in an increasingly uh, competitive world the role of information technology is val vital uh, to a country's uh, future competitive edge. And we are convinced that our, uh, the role of software and the role of technology can really help to uh, improve the economic potential uh, of Bangladesh. In addition to that you know, the original vision of Microsoft was a PC on every desk and in every home. And as you're well aware, in Bangladesh, very few people have access to personal computing technology today. So one of the big focuses for us is to explore ways, whether it's rural kiosks or mobile phones or whatever, of bridging the digital divide and enabling more people in Bangladesh to, uh, to experience information technology, to open their minds to new opportunities, to explore the internet and to find new ways of doing things more productively using information technology. So uh, do you believe that the uh, young generations the, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, uh, which can be really ma uh, can be made competitive in, in the information age of technology? Well, I think we're in a world, Thomas Friedman wrote a very famous book uh, just recently called The World is Flat. And in The World is Flat, he says, there are no borders anymore. Everybody can communicate with everybody else. Everybody can connect with everybody else. Every country can trade with everybody else. I think young people feel very much part of the culture in their country, but they also recognize cultures and opportunities abroad. And I think that the internet uh, really gives a tremendous opportunity for young people to connect with the world, to see and feel experiences beyond what they can experience where they live in their own town or their own village or their own group. So I think that young people around the world are thirsty uh, for information. I think they're thirsty for knowledge and they're, and they're curious. Young people are curious. They want to know what's going on in the world. They want to see what opportunities there are for them. And information technology and access to the internet can help them to see that. So you say the potential of knowledge economy, expanding of knowledge economy in Bangladesh is just uh, about, to, uh, about to embark on the world market. I think so. I think that, uh, I think that every country in the world is really, really now recognizing that the investment in information technology and access to the internet, high powered networks, mobile phones, etc., can have a disproportional impact on the overall growth and economic development of a country. I think at the individual level, if you're using a mobile phone or you're using a computer, your life's richer. You know, if you're working in an organization or a company that really utilizes technology, it gets richer. At a country level, if you really explore and exploit the opportunities provided with information technology, the country gets richer.
Chris, one question. The Bangladesh, you know, the, uh, is a, uh, Bangla is a mother tongue of 140 million people, <coughs> in, in, uh, which is quite different from the uh, Bengali spoken in the um, uh, West Bengal of India. So uh, what is Microsoft is doing uh, to give Bangla its due respect by including support for its language in your uh, uh, MS software? Mm. Well, we think that a language is a vital and vibrant part of every culture. And we believe that every, every, every country should have the opportunity to experience and to interact with computers in their own language. Uh, for years, you know, hundreds of years, people have written with paper and pen. Uh, in the 21st century, people are increasingly typing on keyboards and looking at computers. But those computers don't support the Bangla language that everybody in Bangladesh speaks. So one of the things we're very excited is a partnership with BRAC uh, a University and the government's uh, 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 council to really implement a definitive version of Bangla on Windows. And uh, we've announced that a little while ago, and we'll be bringing it out with our new version of Windows, Windows Vista. Now, we think this is very exciting because many millions of people who speak Bangla and don't speak English will now have the opportunity to interact and to use computers in their native language and their native tongue. And I think it's very important that the, the version of Bangla that people in Bangladesh use is the precise and the specific version of Bangla that's native to Bangladesh and not something that's been imported from India. So we're very, very, uh, I know you're very proud of the language and we're very proud to be able to bring your language to Windows. Uh, every language lives, it changes, it evolves, the words change, new slang words come in, etc. And uh, we will evolve the dictionary with time so that the Bangla version of Windows will always reflect uh, the latest state of the Bangla language in uh, Bangladesh. So um, you know, we know that the Microsoft has uh, many uh, um, projects, special projects for the developing nations uh, <coughs> in software developments, in uh, some software in local languages. So do you have any, any, any such programs uh, in Bangladesh or do you have any plan to uh, project like uh, any special programs uh, for Bangladesh in the coming future? Well, I think one of the things that we really uh, want to, uh, to focus on is increasing access to information technology. I think we believe, we believe that uh, people who have access to information technology and access to the internet, it uh, gives them opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise have. And we want more people to have opportunities. So, you know, if you think of, of any country, think of Bangladesh as a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you've got a lot of people who are wealthy and they can afford to buy computers and use information technology. As you get down the pyramid to the mass of people, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of people who just don't, can't afford access to information technology. So we're really looking at ways of providing information technology to those people. Some examples that we've been working on are things like rural kiosks. If you're in a rural village, you can't afford a PC each. Yep. But maybe you could afford a PC for the village, maybe an internet kiosk where people, you know, on a shared basis would come along and access maybe government services, apply for microloans, maybe check the weather out in a distant town, check the prices of the crops that they're going to sell, or even just browse the internet for fun or play a game. Uh, so I think we're looking at ways of creating sort of shared community centres or rural kiosks that bring first experience of, uh, of technology. The other thing we're looking at is mobile phones. I mean, we have pilots and prototypes about extending mobile phones because today a mobile phone has the processing power of a personal computer only a few years ago. Imagine a couple of years' time, you can take a mobile phone, it's a great mobile phone, you plug it into a little cradle, you connect it to the internet, you plug it into the back of your TV, and you put a small keyboard in front of it. It's a computer device. It's a mobile phone that also enables you to browse the internet, type letters, emails, look at your Hotmail account, etc. You can do that. And that would bring uh, compu richer computing uh, capacity and computing opportunities to millions of mobile phone users. The other area that we're looking at is, uh, is education, because the most important investment that any country can make in the long-term future is education. So a very important program we also have is what we call Partners in Learning, where we really uh, train and we've worked with several thousand teachers in Bangladesh, training teachers how to use information technology in teaching children. Because, you know, children who have access, and we appreciate today that very few children have access to, to personal computers in schools, but it will develop over time. It's really helping teachers to, to be comfortable and familiar with information technology so that they can actually use information technology to teach the next generation 
of Bangladeshis to feel more comfortable with it and to use it for exploring and learning. Chris, we shall talk about the potentiality of Bangladesh market further, but mm. before that, we take a very short break. We'll be back right after the commercial. Dear viewers, stay with us. Don't go away. Dear viewers, welcome back. We're watching Frankly Speaking. Our guest is Mr. Chris Atkinson. Mr. Chris, uh, you are, we are talking about the potentiality of Bangladesh market uh, in terms of uh, information technology. So um, uh, do you believe, really believe that the uh, Bangladesh has got a huge, immense potential uh, uh, market in terms of uh, information technology? Well, I think that uh, Bangladesh is a, a populous country, has a lot of young people, they're bright, smart and intelligent. They're as bright and they're as smart and they're as intelligent as any other country in the world. So I think Bangladesh has as much opportunity uh, to play in the, in the information the technology world as any other country in the world. I think there are some key factors that need to come into place though to really enable this transformation. First, we have to see a really big reduction in telecommunications costs. Now you just think today how many people in Bangladesh use mobile phones and have access to the internet compared with five years ago. We've seen a dramatic increase, but we need to see an even bigger and more dramatic increase with more telecommunications providers, more competition, improved service and lower prices. Then I think we need to have uh, affordable mobile phones and affordable PCs so that millions more people over a period of time have access to the devices that allow them to communicate with each other and access uh, the internet. Then once you've got t cheap telecommunications infrastructure and a very broad utilization of mobile phones and PCs, it's all about content. It's all about developing the rich applications, uh, business applications, uh, entertainment, you know, uh, uh, communication systems, uh, trading systems that will essentially enable uh, Bangladesh to, uh, to build uh, a new generation of exciting content. But there's a very important aspect that needs to also come in, which is the, the respect for intellectual property. Um, because without respect for intellectual property, no one will actually pay for those applications. If no one pays for the applications, no one will build them. So without the respect for intellectual property, no one will build the applications. So are you concerned about the high rate of piracy in the countries like Bangladesh? Or? Yeah, I, I think Bangladesh should be concerned about it. The universities in Bangladesh are very focused on delivering high quality students with great expertise in information and communications technology. And that's vital for the future competitiveness of Bangladesh. But if no one values you software and no one pays for it, there's no software industry, so where do they work? There's no jobs for them. If there's no jobs for them, you'll see less IT professionals and that will not be good for Bangladesh. So I think that you know, developing countries around the world still recognize that poor as they are, Investing in building a software economy has a disproportionately positive impact on, uh, on the GDP development and the overall competitive uh, advantage of, of the country. So I think that Bangladesh can't afford to continue with a high piracy rate um, because I think it will really hold back the development of the information technology revolution in the country. So what Microsoft will do to prevent uh, against the piracy in Bangladesh? Really, there's nothing we can do. Um, I think it really is the responsibility of government. Piracy reduces in other countries. Investment in the IT economy in increases. Uh, we have one calculation for a government uh, in Southeast Asia. A 10% reduction in piracy increases the size of the IT economy by three times. It increases tax revenue by five times and increases the number of jobs by 12 times. <laughs> That's the impact that a significant re reduction in, in, in piracy can, can, can lead to. 
So what will be the uh, Microsoft's role in enhancing the um, or uh, developing the skill of the workforce in Bangladesh so that the Bangladeshi young generations, new IT generations can compete in the world market, uh, not only in the world market, but also to, com to, to, to meet the challenge of the unemployment situation in Bangladesh? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that I spoke a little bit earlier about piracy and I think th uh, there's a lot that the government can do through a framework of intellectual property respect to create the right environment for the software industry to grow and flourish. And then through our partnership with leading universities uh, in the country, we've got very good relations with a number of the public and private universities throughout the country. In fact, just today I had lunch with a, a number of distinguished professors and academics uh, to talk about this very subject. And we want to really help the Bangladesh universities to ensure that when computer science students graduate, they don't graduate with obsolete technologies. They, grow, they, they graduate with fresh, new, shiny skills for the latest and greatest technology. So we are absolutely uh, committed to partnership with the universities to ensure that the curriculum uh, and the technology that those students uh, come out of university with is absolutely uh, up to date and reflective of the latest and greatest of innovation technology because that's the generation that need to be excited about the potential because that's the generation that will essentially see the potential of information and technology and can make it flourish and they need to have skills that are ready for the future and not skills of the past. Chris, I know that you have some social programs in Bangladesh like in education sector and some is in Silet region. So uh, can, can you explain us uh, what you really want to do in the social sectors? I think it, uh, our belief is that uh, it's very important in developing countries that we in in increase access to information technology. So the social programs, I think, you know, three areas, I think. One is with teachers, because, you know, teachers are teaching the next generation. Now, if the teachers teaching the next generation don't know anything about information technology, don't have any thought as to how to use it when teaching, they will not pass on that, 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 that uh, they will not uh, uh, encourage. And you'll have a, a strange environment. Sometimes you'll have students who actually use information technology outside the classroom, it's amazing. Think about the way children use information technology today, the stuff they do with it. Then they walk into the classroom, and the classroom is just the same as it was 100 years ago. You mean the classroom is just the same as it was 200 years ago? We want to make classrooms 21st century, where the type of technology and the excitement and the way that you use information technology in the learning experience it, you know, you'd walk into the classroom and you'd say, this is actually a 21st century classroom. <laughs> the teacher understands about 21st, 21st century technology. And they're having a conversation with the students about how you use it. Today, there's too much of a gap. And uh, our Partners in Learning program is really about training teachers and I think really helping to get teachers enthusiastic about the potential of information technology in teaching. Uh, but it's no good just doing that. You've got to give access to the students when they're away from the classroom. And that's why, again, I mentioned earlier on the rural kiosks and the internet cafes and the, the social centres become so important uh, to provide opportunities for people to actually meet and touch and, uh, and, and feel the internet. Chris, before ending up, just uh, briefly tell us about something, the uh, success of Bill Gates, the secret of success of Bill Gates. Tell us something about him. Passion. I think this, the, the success of Bill Gates, I mean, there's no doubt about it, he's an incredibly smart guy. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I've had the opportunity to meet with Bill and to interact with Bill on a number of occasions. I mean, one of the things that, that Bill, uh, it's passion. He had, his original passion was a PC on every desk and in every home. And it seemed like a wild dream. It seemed crazy. Imagine 30 years ago, a PC on every desk and every home. Now, in, in the developed world, that's not a dream anymore, it's a reality. The challenge now is to make it a, it a reality in the developing world. But passion is it. And I think uh, passion, I think great teamwork, assembling a great team, working with the industry, I think has helped him to accomplish a lot. And the exciting thing with Bill now, with his foundation work, is that I think, you know, he's announced his intention to retire from Microsoft in a couple of years' time to really... In 2008, I Yeah, think. that's right, to really focus on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And, you know, the great thing is he, he earned a lot of money um, through the passion he did in Microsoft. And the exciting thing now is he's going to use that to basically improve the health and the well-being of millions and millions of people around the world in some of the most poorest countries in the world. So I think that will be his legacy, a legacy of passion for technology and software, and I think a legacy of passion for helping improve the, the life and the health and the wealth 
of millions of the world's poorest people. Dear viewers, Microsoft is committed, as Chris opined, to being a responsible industry partner, working with business communities and government to help advance social and economic well-being and to enable people around the world, including Bangladesh, to realize their full potential. Chris said, Microsoft's commitment and responsibilities as a global corporate citizen are grounded in their company mission and values manifested through their business practices and operations and carried out by thousands of Microsoft employees and suppliers worldwide. Thank you very much, Chris Atkinson, for joining us. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed our discussion. Dear viewers, we thank you indeed and see you on next episode. Till then, bye-bye.